Well, we mentioned U.S. futures lower right now on China economic concerns. The price of crude also falling, although our next guest says the cheaper price of oil, softer than expected inflation data of less, could suggest we're near the bottom of the cycle. Joining us now, Liz Miller, president at Summit Place Financial Advisors. Liz, always nice to see you. And uh, what's your late summer assessment of, of what's happening in the markets? Well, uh, aside from the reaction this morning to China, you know, I think from the data points you just mentioned, we certainly are seeing a rally in the U.S. markets. And I think the reason for that is, you know, it's quietly been about six months since the Fed did its first meaningful increase in rates. And we keep looking for evidence of how those have helped inflation in the United States. But, you know, we know from academics, we've always been told rate increases do take about six months to work through our system. So I think even though there's been a lot of dramatic rate increases even since then, we're finally starting to see some of the first data of how it can add up and make a difference. And inflation coming down a little bit, just one data point, we're all saying we could see it reverse in September. But I look at that slight improvement in Michigan sentiment last week. I look at the commodities easing over the first, uh, you know, last few months, particularly oil. And then you get that pullback in core inflation, not just the energy. And I do think it suggests that what I've seen as a slowdown so far this year may be hitting the bottom of its slowdown. Not that we're going to have quick improvement, uh, but we may be now starting to move in the right direction. Well, um, just to, to add to that, I mean, the S&P 500 has bounced nearly 17 percent off its, its summer low. The Nasdaq right now is up more than 22 percent from its low. And, you know, a lot of people are trying to, to ask the question, well, are these bear market rallies? And look, a, a rally of more than 20 percent, if that holds for a, a good chunk of time, we might have to, to your point, reassess what we have seen in the markets. And, and for those who are waiting for a recession call, you know, historically, we we're pretty deep into the recession before we get that official call. And oftentimes the markets are are bouncing, you know, upwards of three months before you even get that call. So historical context likely important right now, assuming no other wild cards. And, and I did want to talk a little bit, Liz, about some of the names you're giving a second look right now. I think about the travel industry, which has had so many complications and the market got pretty jittery on that sector. But but you're looking at it again right now. That's correct, uh, particularly Carnival Cruise Lines, you know, not the highest quality name ever in terms of a stock. Good company, but Cruise Line is challenging. It's a challenging business. Certainly, you know, just devastated looking back a couple of years from COVID already. Uh, but it's a name that hasn't bounced fully back. So many industries have. But when you look at the underlying fundamentals, you see tremendous bookings going forward. There's a lot of demand for this service. But just as demand was picking up post-COVID, of course, they've got slammed with higher oil prices. Um, fuel is just an incredible part of the margins for the cruise line industry. So if we can get some relief on energy costs with the advanced bookings that we're seeing, we see some nice upside here. And, and here's the other tricky part about these markets, right? There was so much... I sit here every day and there were so many people saying, give tech a breather, give tech a breather, avoid that sector right now. There's too much uncertainty. But we've seen some of the hardest hit names have these huge bounces. Um, PayPal is a great example. They talked about how the Nasdaq, since its low, has jumped about 22 percent. Here's a stock that has jumped off its low by about 42 percent. Uh, a well-known active investor that's sort of shaking the cage as well right now. Um, it's just tough. It's tough to try to time the market, I would imagine. Yes, yeah, so we always say never time this market. But PayPal is a great example, as you say, of the tech industry and others where this bounce back in the market that is so strong, um, I don't think it's a bear market rally, but what I think it's a correction for is the overreaction down. You look at the drawdown in our market the first part of this year, given the underlying fundamentals, it just didn't historically make sense. We haven't seen markets fall this dramatically and this hard on the news that we had. So we had a spike in oil prices, we have a spike in inflation. But again, when you look historically at market reactions, uh, a lot of industries, particularly tech, had a complete overreaction. PayPal down over 50% from its previous peak. Now, PayPal and some of the tech 
I think has been on this roller coaster because they uniquely, for the most part, really benefited during COVID. Um, the stock soared higher than they probably should have because everyone was drawing a straight line from how they benefited during such an unusual time. Mm. We knew that time was going to come to an end, but now we overreacted on the downside. So well, I think the rally we've seen is really getting us back to where we should be in the underlying environment. 